Hello, my name is Jackie Hamadi and I'm a dual degree. To start off with some background, vision problems, especially refractive error and poor visual maturation, are among the most prevalent disabling conditions in childhood, affecting both educational and psychosocial development. These outcomes are improved by timely identification and treatment. Community-based pediatric screening efforts improve access to care, bridge gaps between screening and care, and support urban minority youth. The COVID-19 pandemic has made routine care, including these vision screenings, challenging. Current guidelines suggest reliance on pediatric well visits and home-based parental screening. However, well visits are down and parental screening necessitates health literacy of the parents. Community and school-based vision screening programs provide services for children with limited access to care, and the effect of COVID-19 restrictions on these programs is not well understood. In our research, we sought to describe the pandemic-imposed changes to pediatric community vision screenings in the Philadelphia region by quantifying how many programs have remained operational, identifying barriers and facilitators to provision of services, and exploring providers' plans for resumption of services. We've been asking program directors and school nurses to participate in our study. Using snowball sampling, we found the four key providers in Philadelphia, the Eagles Van, Give Kids Sight Day, Salus Eye Institute Screenings, and the 30 or so schools of the Deerbrook program. The survey used for this project was developed specifically for it. It was piloted and revised as needed. There were four domains, how each program got patients, how they set up their screening, how many people they screened and referred, and their plans for resuming service provision. We've been collecting data over a series of two phone calls. During the first, we assessed for interest and eligibility. Before hanging up, we asked them about other program informants as part of our snowball sampling. During our second phone call, we obtain consent and complete the survey together. Data collection is currently underway. For those who were unable to complete screen any vision screenings this past year, the survey was only eight questions long. For programs that were, were able to adapt um, and perform screenings, the questionnaire was 35 questions long with four open-endeds. We used REDCap software to store the answers and took notes on open-ended questions. So far, we collected data on two of the four major community providers and are in contact with the others. Our findings so far suggest that organizations have provided limited to no screening services this past year. For some context, these two organizations together were able to screen over 24,000 children last year and only 360 this year. One provider was able to adapt to smaller scale, more frequent screenings over the phone. Of note, the rate of positive screenings this past year was higher than their average, suggesting that children that needed care were more likely to seek out the services. Neither of those, neither provider that was interviewed is confident when they'll be able to resume services to their pre-pandemic state. Finally, it's probable that unscreened children have not received vision care elsewhere during this time. For our next steps, we're going to continue interviewing our final two program directors. One obstacle that we face has been the heterogeneous nature of each of these programs. It's been challenging finding a balance that evaluates both the qualitative and the quantitative features of their outputs. We've also run into a lot of red tape trying to contact the school nurses as they're trying to reopen schools. So distributing a survey isn't, isn't their top priority right now. Jumping next to the public health implications of these results, Remote learning has led to a loss of valuable learning time and has, as we already know, disproportionately affected disadvantaged children. At the same time, there's been a rise in the rate of myopia or nearsightedness in school-aged children due to the home quarantine and increased screen time. Lastly, these limited community-based vision screening programs means less access to care for these underserved populations. Taken all together, these lead to compounded racial and ethnic academic disparities among children. Increasing support for these services should be a public health priority. This is also just one example of a community-based care provider. It's likely that other community providers have faced similar challenges this past year and have the burden of catch-up on their shoulders as well. 
Improving support for these types of services would help the underserved communities that are disproportionately struggling during the pandemic. I'd like to thank you all for listening to my presentation. I look forward to any questions or comments you have about this study or more generally about the topic of community-based care during the pandemic.